Do you know why the symbol of sodium in the periodic table is Na? Since I do not have a degree in chemistry, I was very curious and so I checked on Wikipedia, our source of information that is sometimes quite wrong, but not in this case. Sodium symbol is Na because of the Latin origin of its name, that is natrium. I know that you don't care, but I do because I studied Latin and ancient Greek at secondary school and I am still in love with them. But anyway, I stop here because I know that this is interesting only for me and so, you know, let's keep on going. As you can see, today we will talk about sodium and more precisely about sodium silicate that in ceramics play a very important role. Uh, we will talk about it in regards of those deflocculation phenomena that they promote, especially within ceramic mixture. I finally want to inform you that this episode will be very, very short and we will be quick, just to frame the topic. For this reason, I would like to invite you here and now to contact our labs for any further information. I am Davide Trentini and this is Apparently Invisible Chemistry in Ceramics. And so, what is this sodium silicate? Let's try to make an identicate. Well, sodium silicate is an inorganic compound that at room temperature is usually at solid state. It is a chemical compound that for its very nature can be used in several ways. We can find it, for example, inside insecticide or fungicide. It can be used as fireproof substance in construction field or as dyer for cotton in textile industry or in the field of art where it is often used to protect wall painting. And in ceramics, what does it do? In ceramics, sodium silicate can play different roles and in general is very effective within ceramic mixtures. And among the several effects that it develops, it's quite important when is used as a dispersant for ceramic mixtures, that is, as a chemical that is able to decrease the viscosity value of the fluid. Sodium silicate, in fact, allows you to reduce the amount of organic compounds within the formula that, due to their comp the composition of the organic compounds, of course, are the basis of those degassing phenomena that may arise during the firing stage. This phenomena, if not correctly managed, can sometimes lead to the formation of porosities within the tile, therefore producing a serious technical and aesthetical problem. But there's more. The reduction of the organic matter promoted by the presence of sodium silicate acts also in regards to the reduction of those degassing phenomena that may lead to the formation of the so-called black core, and you know perfectly. This is a localized area marked by a brown, black or even white color, clearly visible in the thickness of the ceramic tile, that it is usually a sign of an improper oxidation and that it can be considered as an important defect. And I just want to remind you that if you want to deep this problem, you can listen to a previous episode that is all about this kind of defect. But let's go on. Even if it may seem obvious, Sodium silicate, since it is silicious based is marked by the ability to facilitate the formation of glass, thus triggering that process of vitrification and sintering that is the basis of the formation of porcelain stone war. Just a short note for those who are not expert about the sintering process, um, since we have mentioned it, that is, that process of compacting and forming a solid mass of material by means of heat or pressure without melting it to the point of liquefaction. It is used to produce material with specific features that would not be effective if created with a different system. And we could say, in very simple words, there is a sort of densification process that at the same time provides a significant decrease of the porosities within the material. That said, what is sodium silicate from a chemical point of view? To put it simple, sodium silicate, also called water glass, is a polymerized substance in aqueous suspension. That is, a polymeric chain of silicate in anionic form where the cation is sodium. And 
Just because we have also mentioned it, here is another definition for our personal vocabulary. A polymer is a macromolecule with a high molecular weight. It consists on a long chain that can be provided with many branches, and its structure is formed, we could say, uh, by several basic units that are the single molecules called monomers that can be described as a pearls of a pearl necklace. We have already seen this. And they may be aggregated in groups of two, three, four, up to hundreds. Well, let's now address the main topic of the episode that is all about sodium silicate and the flocculation phenomena. We will just say that, in general, sodium silicate, thanks to its features and properties, is able to cover the main mechanism of the three fluidization process, and here we will deal with only two of them. Sodium, as a monovalent cation, produces cation exchange with the bivalent and trivalent cation that are within the solution. What does that mean? It means that this exchange is a phenomenon that leads to a reduction of the agglomeration phenomena that are the basis of flocculation, and that, thanks to the opposite process, reduces the viscosity values of the system. The use of sodium, that is, monovalent cations, allows the replacement of the multivalent positive charge that are on the place that are marked by a weaker charge. This specific kind of cation exchange reduces the positive charge on the clay chalice without neutralizing the negative charge. And all these phenomena result in a reduction of the agglomeration and in a decrease of the viscosity of the system. Well, even in the complexation process, once again, sodium silicate plays a very strategic role. Complexing agents consist of particular chemical molecules, that is, sodium salts, equipped with functional groups that contain atoms that provide the system, that is, our ceramic mixtures, of course, with a very negative electronic charge. When added into the ceramic mixture, the complexing agents release sodium, and we repeat it, is monovalent cation, preferentially attracting multivalent cations. The result of this electrostatic process promotes a cation exchange with a consequent increase in the distance between the particles and so producing a decrease of the viscosity values containing, if not eliminating, the flocculation phenomenon. But now there's a final question. Is sodium silicate enough to properly manage flocculation phenomena or do we need more? The answer is quite simple and, in some ways, even obvious. Even if the action of sodium silicate is relevant, of course, it is not completely effective in avoiding flocculation phenomena if it is not combined with the use of synthetic polymers able to enhance its performance. This is the reason why it is always important to study, develop and use dispersants able to meet all the needs of each production line. And with this last detail about the potentiality of sodium silicate, even today's episode has come to an end. As I told you at the beginning, you can of course contact our labs for each study. But in the meantime, I remind you that you can listen to all episodes on the main platforms or on our app that you can download for free on Apple Store or Google Play by typing Z and S Charamco. I also want to underline that on our app, you can listen to the podcast, but you can also download for free the summary PDF of all episodes that also include explanatory drawings that surely can help on better understanding the most difficult topics. So, I thank you for being with us, and while we are waiting for the next episode, I will take some time to review the periodic table because I surely need it. See you soon.